Good afternoon, Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munga. My name is Richard Azar. I'm from Trinidad in the West Indies. You guys have been very generous with your intellect over the years, and it's been a huge help to me in my personal and financial life. I weathered if it was appropriate for me to describe the methodology in which I'm trying to determine the range of Berkshire's intrinsic value and if you can guide me on if my methodology is flawed or is reasonably accurate. If, if it doesn't take too long, we'll be glad to. Although I think I know the answer already. <laughs> Okay, uh, we, we ended 2003 with about 5.422 billion of operating earnings. I estimated our look-through earnings to be approximately 915 million. So in total, that was about 6.337 billion of estimated look-through earnings. I knew that we spent a billion two on CapEx and our net depreciation on tangible assets was 829 million. So, so there was a difference there of 173 million. And we spent more on CapEx over the depreciation over the last few years. But in extrapolating out 20 years, I thought I might be kidding myself to ascertaining the differences between CapEx and depreciation and I'm using look-through earnings as a rough proxy for distributable earnings. And I've assumed that Berkshire can grow its look-through earnings at 15% per annum from years one to five, and at 10% per annum from years six to 20, and the business will stop growing after year 20, resulting in a 7% coupon from year 21 onwards. I discounted the cumulative flows in years 1 to 20 by 7%, and I discounted the terminal value by 7%. I added the two together to get what I thought was the intrinsic value of Berkshire's cash stream. I knocked off 103 billion of liabilities and minority interest. I divided by 1,537,000 shares to arrive at what I thought was a conservative calculation of the range of Berkshire's intrinsic value. Am I off the mark, or is that the sort of methodology you might use yourself? Well, <laughs> well you've done your homework. <laughs> the, uh, the line of thinking is correct. It just depends on what variables you plug in, and, and we might have different ideas on variables and neither one of us knows, but the approach in general, the, 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 the approach of trying to figure out distributable cash over a period of time, the, the business today is worth the present value at some number, you're using 7%, but the question what number to use, but it's worth the present value of all the cash it can distribute between now and Judgment Day, and if if cash can be retained and it's at a rate higher, it produces at a rate higher than your discount rate. Obviously, uh, you'll get some benefit from that retention. But you know, I, I would uh, I would say that your assumptions about capex and 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 uh, related to depreciation. I would expect CapEx to, just, to be on average a little more than depreciation unless we run into highly inflationary times. But of course we have to keep buying businesses and using the capital in the business that we retain. If we retain those earnings, we have to use that to buy more businesses and then the question is what kind of returns can we expect on those. I don't, I don't, quarrel, with, I don't quarrel with the approach you're using, but you know, everybody has to do their own equation and plug in some numbers. And, I think uh, we might settle for for lower numbers on on earnings gains than you've postulated because we're very large and it's it, it's it's it gets harder all the time to deploy the kind of funds that keep keep flowing into Omaha. Charlie. 
Yeah, and you shouldn't necessarily get overly excited about last year. As Warren said, something. that is a, uh, it was a very unusual year when everything worked together pretty, pretty darn well. Except interest rates on. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, but, but a lot worked together very well. The interesting thing about Berkshire's present valuation is how much cash and cash equivalents it has to do something. And that is a very interesting question. How well are we going to do with this massive amount of investable cash and cash equivalents? Yeah, we should be out working now. I mean, it, it, <laughs> that, that is the test. I mean, we've got a bunch of good businesses. We've got a lot of money that we'd like to use to buy more good businesses. We may get lucky and, and, and uh, deploy that quite rapidly. Uh, we may wait a long time. Uh, it, cash may pile up faster than we can use it, in which case we'll have to rethink the whole game. But our hope is, and so far we've, we feel okay about what's happened in that. Our hope is that we can, re can deploy the, the money that flows in at, in businesses that are come close to being as good as the ones that we've bought over the years.